Hello, I'm Martina Hughes, your love, intimacy and relationship mentor. I've been supporting men and women over the last 13 years to experience empowerment in all areas of their lives, looking at the way intimacy, sex and relationships are often fraught with challenge and struggle and how it is people can step into having authenticity, love, intimacy and being in that in a beautiful, real, healthy and holistic kind of way. So tonight's topic is about the impact of power plays and sexual shame on our lives broadly, but also on our relationships. So I really invite you, anybody who's listening at any time at all, do place a comment in the chat box. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if this topic's resonating for you. If you have particular questions that you'd like to ask, please do share your questions. Um, if, if it hits a spot for you and it's like, yes, actually, I feel like this, let me know that too. Um, hi, Darren. Great to see you there. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Cherie. Hi, Lindy. Hi, Alison. Um, yeah, it's great, great to see a bunch of people joining. So firstly, what is sexual shame? Where does sexual shame come from? For me, I kind of imagine that the world we live in is, is like we live in this collective soup. There's a whole lot of beliefs and feelings and conditioning and programming that is the collective soup that we live in. And so all of us are impacted by the collective consciousness. We're impacted by the thoughts, the stories and the feelings of each other. Hi, Peter. Hi, Alison. Hi, Magdalena. Um, yeah, so right now in today's world, there's a lot of sexual shame. What I see happening is that sex is used to, to sell products. Sex is used to manipulate us. Sex is also extremely repressed and, and quite heavily distorted. So it's rare to see healthy examples of sexuality in the world we live in today. It's either blatantly distorted and manipulated to create sales, to make us feel inadequate, to make us want more, or there are examples of sex where it's highly repressed and there's that sense that sex is bad, sex is wrong. And we hear a lot of dialogue that, shames women for being sexual, that, that idea that you shouldn't wear a short skirt or you shouldn't look too sexy or you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't, you know, look a certain way because it might have an impact on a man. And then equally men experience a lot of sexual shame and this is the side of the equation that is not very often addressed and in my work with men what I've seen is that it's absolutely critical to bring this discussion about sexual shame forward because we need to know that sexual shame impacts men just as much as it impacts women. Of course, it has impacts in different ways and I'm not here to, to compare the effect on men against the, the effect on women, but I do see it as part of my purpose to illuminate the situation that men today are in um, because not many people are talking about that and a lot of the men I work with, um, a lot of my clients over the last 13 years, also male friends of mine, my partner, have shared with me the impact that it has on them that we live in a culture, we live in a society where men are made wrong for having a penis. Men are assumed to be predators. They're assumed to have to prove themselves to be worthy and that to prove themselves as not being a danger to women. Now, of course, there are men out there who are predators. There are women out there who are predators. But there's also a lot of 
really beautiful men out there. There's a lot of beautiful women out there who are not predators. And so I see in my work with men specifically, I see men walking around pretending that they don't have a penis, pretending that they're not sexual. And the phrase that I coined for that a number of years ago was that it feels like men are afraid to bring their penis into the room. It's like if they know they're going to be in a room with a woman or a group of women, they'll leave their penis outside the door before they come in so that then they can appear as a safe man. How many of the men who are listening right now have had that experience of feeling that you need to chop your penis off or leave your penis behind in order to be perceived as a safe man? Maybe just type yes, I can relate to that into the chat box if that sounds like something that, that you've recognised in yourself. And it's this kind of sexual shame. It's, it's the sexual shame that it's not okay to have a penis. It's not okay to have a vagina. It's not okay to experience arousal or desire. It's that kind of sexual shame that causes us to be in the position of it's not okay to be me. And so when we feel sexual shame, then that turns into the situation of feeling like there's something wrong with me. And desire is very natural. Desire is as natural as breathing. We can all experience desire every day for a variety of reasons and sometimes it's the desire of yes I want to have sex with somebody and sometimes it's the desire of oh I want to be touched I want to be filled I want to penetrate or be penetrated and sometimes it's the desire of I want to feel free I want to feel expanded sometimes it's the desire to be out and be at one with nature there can be all sorts of ways in which desire touches our body our life our spirit and yet we're often afraid to experience desire because there's this idea that desire is wrong desire will make us stand out or desire will bring the wrong kind of attention into our lives notice there's a couple of comments here from the men Darren has commented that he experiences sexual shame and that sense of needing to leave his penis outside and how much he hates it Peter says he doesn't relate to it um, of course everybody will have different experiences but I know in groups of men that I work with the majority of the men will share that they're scared of being judged as predators they're scared of being judged that that you know they have a penis and they might want sex and the sad thing about that is that we actually need men to show up with their penis we need men to show up with their sexual desires so that we as women have something to respond to when a man shows up castrated and disconnected from his penis he then presents as a very safe guy he then presents as somebody who we might want to hang out with and drink tea with and and go shopping with or pour all our problems out to but he doesn't present as somebody that we'd like to be intimate with because if a man's not in his body if a man's not connected to his sex then there's no possibility of igniting the woman's sexual feeling there's no possibility of igniting her sexual body so sexual shame in men means that men walk around feeling like they have to apologize for being men and oftentimes our our sexual shame goes right back to when we were children and maybe your parents said to you don't touch yourself or don't chase girls or don't chase boys or boys just want th one thing or when you grow up you better be a good boy and you better not not you know 
try and take advantage of women. So oftentimes we grow up with this cultural dialogue that says you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and you shouldn't be sexual and you shouldn't express yourself that way and you shouldn't touch yourself, which then creates this constant constant sense of inner conflict because there's a very natural part of every man and every woman that wants to express sexually and then at the same time we're being told that that's wrong that's not okay we should shut down control and limit those parts of ourselves Darren says that he shows up but then he feels shame for showing up and when when shame is such an enormous part of our collective dialogue, of our collective conditioning, it can be that sometimes people have a sexual experience and then after sex, the first thing they feel is shame, regret, fear, a sense of being wrong for what they've just experienced and enjoyed. It can also be the case that because of sexual shame, People struggle to be present sexually. People struggle to look into each other's eyes. People struggle to enjoy their own bodies. And then when sexual shame is present and we struggle to enjoy our own sexual, sexual pleasure, we outsource sexual pleasure. We make somebody else responsible for our own feelings of vitality, aliveness, expansion, joy and pleasure. When we outsource that, it's always going to be limited because if I, if I put an idea out there that my partner is responsible for making me feel good, then if he's responsible for making me feel good, then I take on this idea that I don't have to be present in my body. I don't have to show up. He, I'm just going to walk into the room and he'll do everything to make it happen. But that creates a scenario where a woman is sitting there or lying there going, well, why is he doing the wrong thing? And when's he going to touch me properly? And when's he going to do the right thing? Why is he touching me like that? Because when a woman's not present in her body, there's nothing in her that reflects pleasure back to him. So then she's in her mind analysing what he's doing and waiting for him to do all the perfect right things. So it creates this vicious circle. And a lot of what I see happening for women today, and myself and Rod spoke about this during our Men in Love presentation that we did back in May that we recorded and it's now being released. There's, there's five parts that we're releasing. We've already released part one and part two. So you can see those on, on my Facebook page. If you haven't seen them yet, they're both on my Martina Hughes page and the Tantric Blossoming page. Um, in the Men in Love talk, both Rod and I spoke about the impact of sexual shame in a lot of depth. I know that a lot of women were deeply touched by those talks and in particular touched by the way in which Rod expressed himself because for a lot of women they've never heard a man speak about sexual shame and the effect that that has on a man. And I've been in quite a, a privileged position to have worked with so many men and to have had a lot of male friends and to have heard a lot of these stories firsthand of how men really struggle to own their sexual desires because they don't want to be perceived as predators. They don't want to be perceived as taking advantage of women or doing the wrong thing by women. And so it then part of part of what I see show up in today's world and again I hear this from men quite commonly is that men experience women waiting for them to do everything perfectly there's a sense for a man that he's got to you know make sure he dresses the right way and says all the right things and brings the right gifts and and he has to you know 
really extend himself to get things perfect and a woman will be carrying stories along the lines of you know well I'll love him when he does this for me and he does that for me and I'll feel sexually connected when this and this and this happens and it turns into a kind of power play it turns into this story that he has to be perfect and everything's got to look a certain particular way before a woman will let go. In actual fact, the, the real answer, the real gift is a woman learning that her letting go, her surrendering to herself. When a woman surrenders to herself, when she surrenders to her body, her pleasure, and just lets herself bask in the way energy moves through her, that's where her power is. It's not so much about even surrendering to a man, it's surrendering to her body, surrendering to her pleasure, such that when a woman does that, when a woman is deeply rooted in her own body, a man can walk into the room and sense how to approach her, how to touch her, how to kiss her, how to stroke her, how to be with her in such a way that her pleasure becomes expanded and amplified. Whereas when a woman is rigid and controlling and he must touch me like this and then he must, must do this and I need clitoral clitoral stimulation in this fashion and then he must go down on me and then he must penetrate me and then he he needs to do this and obviously I'm exaggerating a little bit here but when a woman holds a lot of control and rigidity and tightness around what works for her then she's not trusting her body she's putting her mind first she's prioritizing her mind and the past history so in that sense she's not really giving a man a chance to meet her to feel her the other aspect that is really important here is that a woman needs to she needs to listen to her body to trust trust who is a good match for her to trust who it is that she shares that surrendered open pleasure of her body with. Just got a comment here from Sasha Grace. It's the old controlled patriarchy within the matriarch lineage beliefs, etc., which need to be cleaned up, yes, so that the men can heal too. Definitely, definitely. And, and this is where... It's no longer a man's problem and it's no longer a woman's problem. We actually need to all recognize that we're in this together. Like women have a role to play in men's healing and men have a role to play in women's healing. We can together, we can support each other to be so much more. But if we're always waiting for the opposite sex to do the right thing, to get it perfect, to, to clean things up, then we'll be waiting a long time. And I really see that we have to, we have to drop a lot of the blame games. We, we have to drop the power plays and just go, I'm going to show up and communicate, be as authentic as I can be, share my feelings, share the things that scare me because it's actually sharing the things that scare us, that's what builds intimacy and closeness and that accelerates desire, arousal and connection in a relationship. I'd love to hear from, from some more people who are watching. If you're watching at home, just type a comment into the chat box. Let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know if you have any questions or reflections. Let me know if you have any sense of how sexual shame and power plays impact your relationship or impact your life overall because sexual shame, the effect that it has is that if I'm wrong, if I take on sexual shame, then there's a belief here that I'm wrong for being a sexual being. And if I'm wrong for being a sexual being, it actually means that I'm wrong for existing. And sexual shame then means that 
it impacts my level of confidence. If I walk into a business meeting, if I walk into a new space, if there's sexual shame in my body, there'll be a part of me that's trying to hide, trying to hide my feelings, trying to hide the responsiveness in my body, trying to hide the responsiveness in my face. There'll be an element of how do I control all that? How do I keep it all tucked away? How do I stop people from seeing that the world around me has an effect on me? So sexual shame, we might think that it impacts our sexual relationships, which it definitely does, but it also impacts, it impacts our friendships, it impacts our working relationships, it impacts the confidence that we go into our business, our work, our purpose with. It impacts every part of us because it affects our self-worth, it affects our self-esteem. And I really think that as as a society, we, we need to support each other in turning this around. As a society, we need to have a look and go, yeah, our men are hurting today and our women are hurting. And how is it that we role model healthy sexuality? How do we step into each man and each woman feeling free in their own skin to love their sexuality, to show their responsiveness, to feel comfortable about owning their pleasure, moving their body sensually, moving their body in such a way that reflects their feelings. So we need a new dialogue in our society around what it is to be healthy sexually. And to be healthy sexually is about much more than the act of penetration. Penetration is one, one reflection of the sexual experience. But if we go beyond that, to be a sexual being is to own that energy in your body, to actually allow that energy to pulsate through you on a daily basis, to feel the vibrancy and aliveness of who you are in each and every day. How many people who are watching give yourself space to feel sexual energy flowing through your body alone or with a partner? How many of you give yourself permission to let that sexual energy flow? Gina's laughing, uh, laughing, I think. Yeah, they're laughing faces. Okay, so something I said was just funny for Gina. Darren's put a, a sad face emoji. So I'm really aware that this is, it's a strongly emotive topic because most of the time from when we were very young, there's, there's a fear in talking about sex. There's, there's fear in being vulnerable around sex. We kind of grow up thinking that we're meant to be experts on sex, we're meant to have it all worked out, you know, by, by the time we're 20 or even by the time we're 16 or 18 that we're meant to know all about sex. But one of the things I particularly enjoy about getting older is it's like it's one I'm much more comfortable in my body and much more comfortable about sex than I've ever been but also recognizing that there's still so much for me to learn and enjoy there's so much for me to grow into Alison has said yes she feels the effect of this on her life Darren says he feels guilty about the energy he's started opening up to in his sexual energy but it brings guilt yeah I know when I first started doing body work with men, I had quite a number of men express to me that after ejaculation, the first thing they feel is guilty, you know, guilty about the pleasure, guilty about having ejaculated. And so there's so many layers in which sexual shame builds up in our body, in our relationships. Claude says is sexually connected with spirituality definitely our our sexuality 
and our spirituality are connected everything in this life is connected we are spiritual beings and we are sexual beings and it's actually impossible to separate the two we are like we come from the spirit world and we manifest into this physical world but sex is the gateway that we manifest into the physical world and equally sex can be used as the gateway to reconnect with the spiritual world through our individual and shared sexual experiences we can explore spirituality we can open up to expanded dimensions and start to experience the divine in ourselves and in our beloved peter says exactly and diara says sometimes after a long time together we get lazy about making the movements towards intimacy and sex definitely i, I can see how that happens and this is where it can be common in long-term relationships that people wait to feel sexy to have sex but if you wait till you feel sexy then it'll be one of those things of like waiting for the perfect day waiting till the weather's perfect and the kids are good and the house is clean and work hasn't been a pain in the ass or whatever the pressures and demands are in your life so there can be that waiting 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 but it's actually having sex regularly that provides the inspiration it's actually having sex regularly touching your own body regularly taking responsibility for your own pleasure that is what will support you to feel sexy but if you wait for that to happen good luck and and i know that life can be challenging i know that time and and energy demands can can feel all consuming but i do know and i just had a webinar tonight for my year one training group and at the end of the webinar everybody was looking a little bit tired and we'd been going through a little bit of emotional processing and awakening some kind of sexual aspects and at the end of the webinar i had people stand up and move and stretch and breathe and embrace their sexual pleasure for just actually i was going to say four but it was just three minutes so three minutes of embracing sexual pleasure at the end of the webinar caused everybody to like perk up and feel more vibrant and feel more vital so taking responsibility for our sexual pleasure actually means that we will have more energy we will feel better we will feel more alive so if you are somebody who struggles to make time for the sexual connection or feels a bit lazy about it know that by prioritizing that time by making space for it and making space for it can be as simple as just putting on some beautiful sexy music and just dancing in in your bedroom on your own and then you know going out and saying to your partner i've been having this this beautiful dance on my own and i'd love to share some intimate time with you now um and yara says feels easy to get in touch with our own sexuality than allow time to this engagement need to happen to both partners at the same time to have it more often and yeah that's that's true however each partner can inspire each other so i know if if rod and i haven't connected sexually for a little while then and when i say a little while like in our case like a week is a long time so if it's been a week and we haven't connected sexually then i'll spend some time to like dance and connect with myself and massage my breasts and feel that energy moving through my body and then just to go to wherever rod might be in the house or to go and find him in the bedroom and and just you know begin kissing him with that feeling of ignited desire and aliveness in my body to to touch him and allow him to feel my arousal because i know that when the arousal is alive in my body that sparks the aliveness in his body 
and vice versa if I've been a bit flat and self-contained and, and not feeling sexually alive he'll come to me with a certain kind of presence and intention and desire and he'll touch me in a certain way that will have me go oh that's right that's right I missed that and then my body opens again and this is part of the commitment that Rod and I have made in our relationship to not leave each other sexually hungry to to not get get to the place where we're overly overly craving sex or feeling like the other is disinterested and to me that's an important commitment to make because in my work with people I see a lot of people hungry sexually and really wishing and waiting for their partner to do something different but the truth is we need to take responsibility that each and every one of us can do something different and if that doing something different is like standing here for a few minutes and dancing and tapping into the sensuality in my body and then walking up to Rod and caressing the front of his body and going I want you now and I know for sure that if I go up to him and I say I want you now he will respond so if you're wondering how to get things started try that walk up to your partner and say I want you now or I, I would like sometimes I play silly games like I'll do silly kind of sexy goofy dances or I'll, I'll like you know walk out entirely naked and then just you know interrupt whatever he's doing so that it sparks the sexual connection between us and Diara says thank you that was really helpful excellent I'm glad that's a support um, Amy says how would you recommend healing the shame that can come up as a woman after being intimate so there's a few levels to that Amy what I would suggest first of all is to name up the shame to in your relationship to actually speak to the shame to say there's a shame that comes up for me after sex and the shame can cause me to want to pull away or disconnect from you or I start feeling unworthy when the shame comes up and I'd really love it if you could stay present and hold me through that shame so that my body stays open or it reopens also it's worth having a look at what's the root of the shame like where in your life did that shame come from did it come from something that your parents said to you did it come from early sexual experiences does it come from sexual abuse in your life what is it that's happened in your life that has a strong hold on you that causes that shame to be activated after being intimate and that's the kind of work that we do in in the coaching and and the bodywork sessions that I offer but also in our um, we've got a men's level one and a women's level one program where there's space for you to have a look at your sexual patterning have a look at the shame and start to understand and unravel some of that past history one of the things I discovered quite early on in my tantra journey was that sexual shame existed for me because of watching adults when I was a child let's say watching television with adults who, who were family members but that when some sign of kissing or intimacy or sex came on television the adults in the room would go and contract and when that happened there's this contraction that starts down in the pelvic floor and it moves through the genitals the groin the hips the buttock up the back the, the shoulders the neck the jaw so what I recognized in myself is that my parents my grandparents other adults I watched television with would become really nervous about signs of intimacy kissing sex on television and they would contract and shut down in their body and when we're children we're all kind of like magnetic sponges when we're children we feel the things 
that the adults around us do even if we don't cognitively we even if we aren't cognitively aware of that so what I recognized for me was that any time there was that sign of intimacy and something inside me would start tingling then the adults would go <laughs> because of their own fear and shame about intimacy so then I learned to go <laughs> And so for me, the shame in my childhood actually went back to really simple memories of watching television with my parents and my grandparents, that this is the way shame has an impact on our lives and has us get caught up like a pretzel thinking that there's something wrong with us. So, yeah, sexual shame, it's a big one to unravel. If you haven't watched... Our men and love presentation yet part one and part two are available part three will be released uh, next Monday night on Facebook and then part four the week after sexual shame is part of what we speak about there as well as some of the differences between men and women and it's really important to me that we start bridging this gap and we start coming back to recognize that all men and all women want love and sex all men and all women want to feel connection and so much of what is happening in our society today does not support connection does not support intimacy does not support vulnerability and so my message is start having real conversations about sex start talking with each other about the effect that that has on your body start talking about the effect that shame has on your life because the more we have these conversations we bring sex out into the light and the more we bring it out into the light then the more free we can all feel to embrace our desire our love our passion our longing and whatever it is we want to explore Amy says thank you Martina it was a blessing to have you visit Red Tent Bournemouth ah Amy I met you in Bournemouth beautiful beautiful that was quite uh, three years ago now um, but yeah thanks thanks for the comment Amy lovely to feel and, and see you here it must be morning time for you in the UK now uh, and there's a comment from Darren earlier saying that he can't ejaculate um, and I know for some men some men struggle to ejaculate because of shame because they've learnt for so many years to withhold their sexual energy to hold back their desire that then it gets to a point where their body is no longer free to release and that's why it's it's important to allow space for people's sexual feelings and also to recognize that healthy sexuality is owning your aliveness in your body being able to walk down the street and feel your body buzzing with aliveness feel your desire in all of its manifestations and to feel your desire whether it's sexual desire for a man or a woman whether it's desire to expand to be full whether it's desire to penetrate life whether it's desire to get your purpose out there but our desire is part of what makes us feel alive so when we shut down sexually we shut down our desire we shut down our feelings then we're only half living so it's 10 o'clock it's about time for me to head off to bed I think Rod's headed gone to bed early so it's about time I came and connected with him in the bedroom instead of sitting here talking with all of you about it um, yeah but lovely to share tonight thanks to everybody who contributed and anybody who's watching later on please do do comment and and let me know if this resonates for you and yeah let's let's all contribute to creating a world that is free of sexual shame free of power plays so that 
we can enjoy the quality of love, sex and intimacy that we all desire and deserve. And I'm going to go and join my partner in the bedroom right now. Good night.